Good morning, dragons. I'm Mr. Salerno, and this is Flame, and we want to welcome you to the news of Camelot. Today is Wednesday, April 22nd, 2020, and Flame, we have an action-packed show today. There's so much going on, and it is Earth Day, Flame, and we could ask for a better day outside. Beautiful skies, sunny day, high of 60 degrees, maybe even a perfect day to do a workout, huh? Because it's Wednesday. At the end of the show, Dragons, don't worry. We will provide that workout for you. We're switching things up just a little bit, not too much. We're continuing our journey west, though. Flame introduced a few states in the eastern part of the United States. And last week, we talked about Minnesota. We're just going to keep going west. And we're going to talk about the great state of Colorado. Let me get my handy straw. Right there, Dragons. That orange state right there. And this is a beautiful scene known as the Maroon Bells. The Maroon Bells is a beautiful part of Colorado. And Colorado has what's called the highest elevation of any state in the United States. It is 14,000 feet above sea level on average. Now this picture here is just one of many beautiful parts of Colorado. The tallest point in our country is known as Mount Elbert, 14,440 feet. Colorado was our 38th state to join the United States, and it joined in 1876. So it's known as the Centennial State because 100 years of American history had developed, and Colorado came along on the 100th birthday of the United States. Colorado if you break down the state name Colorado, color red, given to us by Spanish explorers for all the muddy waters that came from not just mud, but that real red brick type soil that comes from the mountains. So it's kind of a cool looking red. Kind of like this picture, right? Now, Colorado is one of the more clean states in the United States. That's why Flame and I chose it. Electricity from renewable resources has doubled in the last 10 years. And two cities in Colorado are two of the 15 cleanest cities in the United States. Those cities are Pueblo Canyon City and Colorado Springs. Now the interesting thing, Dragons, you can't really see it here, but on this map, the Rocky Mountains go from Canada down through Mexico. That's our largest mountain range, right? And that is what's known as our Continental Divide. Our continental divide, because the mountains are so high here, any of the rivers that flow this way eventually make their way to the Atlantic Ocean. And any of the rivers and lakes and streams that flow this way make their way to the Pacific Ocean. But the highest points where the divide goes right through almost entirely to Colorado, right? That makes it the highest elevated state. So a beautiful state, we recommend going. I think Flame and I have been there twice, I want to say. It's lovely. So if you get a chance, go visit Colorado. Dun, da, da, da. It's time for the birthday box. And dragons, like we said, we have run into a bit of a snag with our birthdays. But we have a staff member who has a birthday today, Mr. Sorensen. Happy birthday to you, Mr. Sorensen. We hope that it is wonderful. And... The mail, the mail came very quickly today, Dragons, but nevertheless, our fearless leader wanted to write us. Let's see what Miss Flaherty has in store. Hi, Dragons. I haven't told you a joke in a while, so here's one, hopefully to put a big smile on your face. Dragons, if April showers bring May flowers, what do May flowers bring? Hmm, what do May flowers bring, Flame? Mayflowers bring pilgrims. <laughs> That's true. I wasn't even thinking of that. I was going to say like bees or... I don't know. Dragons, don't forget, tomorrow is Thursday, so it's character dress-up day, and Friday is Falls Church High School Pride. So if you don't have anything with Falls Church on it, you can wear something with flame on it. Yep, you sure can. Don't forget to tell everyone you know to show their Camelot spirit. Lots of love, Miss Flaherty. 
Miss Flaherty the Jokester. I know, she's been very serious recently. But I'm glad she put a smile on your face, Flame. And these riddles, they always get me. Now, dragons, here's the deal. We don't have any mail from you today. So we have a bit of a challenge for you. All right? We are about to embark on Earth Day fun and some Workout Wednesday fun. Okay? So here's the deal. When you write us, okay, the next two things we do, we're going to do some trivia for Earth Day, and we're going to do some workouts, right, some ideas for workouts. Send us a photo or send us a letter of how well you do with the trivia and how well you might do with the workouts. If it comes with a picture or it comes with just your thoughts, I got them all right, or I feel so great after my workout, let us know because... After this program, you're going to feel so much smarter and so much stronger, okay? So, Earth Day Flame is today, April 22nd, the 50th celebration. So, we prepared some Earth Day questions for you just for today. Three of the questions have to deal with oxygen, right? Just like Colorado has very clean air. And three of the questions just have to do with general Earth Day facts. Let's see how many you can get. Remember, there are six of them, okay? So if you're going to participate, maybe someone can take a photo of you doing this or just tell us if you get all of them right or some of them right or whatever. Okay, so here we go. Question number one, dragons. More than half of the breathable oxygen in the world comes from where? More than half of the breathable oxygen. Does it come from forests? Does it come from oceans? Does it come from flowering plants, or does it come from clouds? Hmm. Which one, Flame? You know, I got this wrong, too. It comes from the ocean. I got that so wrong, because there's this tiny stuff in the ocean called phytoplankton, right? And it gives us half of the breathable oxygen. I had no idea. I know, that's crazy. So, next question. What percentage of the Earth's oxygen comes from the Amazon rainforest? Now, the Amazon rainforest is in South America, and it is very large. But what percentage comes from the Amazon rainforest? 5%, 10%, 20%, or 30% of the world's oxygen comes from the Amazon rainforest? You got that one, Flame. It is 20%. 20% of all of our oxygen comes from one rainforest. How about that? Question number three. All right, so imagine a 50-year-old tree, a tree that's been around for 50 years. A 50-year-old tree produces enough oxygen for how many people in a year? So how many people could use the oxygen provided by one 50-year-old tree? Is it four people? Is it eight people? Is it 12 people or 16 people? Four, eight, 12, or 16. How many? Very good, Flame. I know. Only four people. So if you have a 50-year-old tree, four people can get the oxygen they need for one year. That's why we need these trees around. All right, so now we're going to shift gears. Three other questions. This is a fun one. Dragons, how many people on Earth depend on fish as their main source of daily protein? Huh? I know we didn't do superfoods, but this is a good question for us to think about, right? If you do or do not like fish. How many people on Earth depend on fish as their main source of daily protein? One out of every ten people? Three out of every ten people, five out of every ten people, or seven out of every ten people? What do you think? If you said one, you'd be wrong. The answer is three. Three out of every ten people on the planet rely on fish, and they fish. How about that? All right, question five. What objects are most frequently found in beach and shore cleanups, right? So, okay, I see now. If you're on the beach, right, and you see all kinds of trash, what is usually that trash? Like, what do we have to usually pick up? 
Do we have to pick up plastics? Do we have to pick up glass? Do we have to pick up wood and lumber? Or do we have to pick up iron and steel? I feel like iron and steel would be like if there were ships or submarines that were broken, right? But what do you think it is, dragons? What are we cleaning up? And I can hear you all saying plastics. Yes, plastics are the number one thing we have to clean up. Did you know, dragons, that 91% of the plastic that we can recycle, we don't recycle? That's awful, right? We have all these opportunities to reduce and reuse and recycle, and we don't recycle nearly enough plastic that we should. Let's get on it. Last question, dragons. Here we go. And your final opportunity if you have to take a photo. In the average United States home, what uses the most energy? Ooh, so we might be able to get this one, right? What uses the most energy in your home? Refrigerators, televisions and computers, heaters and air conditioners, or the lighting in your house? So you think about all the energy, right? What uses the most? That's right, very good. Heaters and air conditioners. And you got, that's got to make sense because they're on pretty much all the time. So on a beautiful day like today, turn off the heater or air conditioner, open the windows, get some fresh air in, and give that energy source a break, right? So out of six questions, dragons, how many did you get? If you got four, you're on your way to being an Earth Day expert. If you got six, you're amazing. I didn't get six. Flame didn't get six, and Flame's a genius. So we're going to work on Workout Wednesday now, our last thing of the day. We have three fun stretches, and Flame was demanding, demanding that every Workout Wednesday we do this stretch. And we've done this stretch in the past. You might know what it's called, huh? So everything that we do with today's workout involves switching, right? So you might lean one way, or you might work in one direction and then you switch. So for this first stretch, dragons, you're going to put your right leg in front and your left leg behind you, and then hold that for 10 seconds. Switch, put your left leg in front and your right leg behind you. And if you want to roar like Flame does when he gets up, right, have at it, the dragon. So then we're going to get into this flexible position called the airplane. See if you can balance on your right foot with your left leg pointing up and your arms out, and then switch. Then balance on your right foot with your left leg pointing out. Okay, that's the airplane. And then the lying twist. So put both legs on the left side, twist your body, right? Feel good, feel really loose, and then switch your legs. Put your legs on the right side, right? You can do that a couple times. Now you're ready for a workout. And like we said, it is a theme to switch it up just a little bit. All right, so I got all four exercises here. I'll back it up just a bit. The first exercise, vertical scissors. Vertical scissors. You're going to kick one leg up in the air, and if you feel really good, touch it with your opposite arm. And keep doing that. Right arm, left leg. Right arm, left leg. Right arm, left leg. Do 10 of those, and then switch. Left arm, right leg, left arm, right leg, okay? Then we have side leg lifts, side leg lifts. See this lady demonstrating? She's taking both of her legs and lifting them up in the air at the same time. Don't stop, do 10 and then switch sides, right? Then do 10 more leg lifts, two legs doing the lifting. Then you're gonna do something called bird dogs. See how this lady has her right arm extended and her left leg out. Hold that 10 seconds long and then switch. Put your right arm out and then your left leg. That's called a bird dog. And then dragons, the last one. We kind of snuck this one on here because we love it so much. We're going to do the tripod, right? So start with your left arm on the ground. Put your right arm behind you. Spread your legs just a little bit. Hold that for 10 seconds and then switch arms, okay? If you feel really good, do this whole workout two times and you will feel so strong, so excellent on this beautiful Earth Day. On behalf of Flame, I'm Mr. Solano. Make sure you wash your paws. Tune in tomorrow. We hope you have a wonderful day.
Thanks for tuning in, dragons.